Okay, thanks for tuning in. So I am using Derwent Inktense pencils on wood, and this is a basswood, B-A-S-S. I got it at Home Depot, and then I trimmed the edges. I kind of um, sanded down the edges. Well, my husband has a woodworking shop, so we kind of used the big sander and sanded down the edges, and then I used like a torch, like an artist's torch, like a brulee type of a thing, torch, and fired along the edges to get those darkened edges. So this is a practice piece. Basically, I wanted to see what this wood was like, and it was really nice. I definitely had to prime it. I used a polyurethane primer because on a few test areas I did, um, it absorbed too much of the pigment, the ink, because this ink tents pencils is diluted with water. So what I'm doing is putting down the pencil, I'm basically drawing in the area that I want to fill in, and then I use water to activate it. So that's what I mean, that's what's on the brush, it's just water. Um, so when I first did that on wood, it really kind of bled out. It didn't stay in place, the paint. So the polyurethane, a really thin coat, I noticed everything really stayed in place here. But I was also really careful not to use too much water um, and move around the polyurethane, you know, I didn't want to activate the polyurethane basically underneath the paint. So I was kind of really careful. And I think definitely I did with this white. That's why it kind of, it got real tin, dingy, kind of that, that dingy gray color there. I think that reacted with the polyurethane. So as you can see, I'm doing lots and lots of layers. That is gouache that I'm using there. The ink tents um, was really absorbing into the wood, so I needed something thicker, but I didn't want to use all gouache because I wanted that painterly effect, like that kind of thin, transparent painterly effect that you get with watercolors, but I knew watercolors wouldn't be enough, like enough pigment for this, so that's why I did the Derwent ink tents. And uh, I'm really happy, actually, with the way it turned out. It was, it was a, a, you know, many more layers than I had expected. So I did spend a lot of time on this. I would say probably about two hours of total painting. I was kind of hoping it would be like an hour thing, you know. But um, again, I was kind of figuring it out too. So it was, it was, it took a while, but. Um, it was really enjoyable actually to work on the wood. It was a soft surface, so um, I played around a little bit with the knife, with the X-Acto knife after to get some feathers to do a little scraping and to see. Um, I think I have that at the end here. So that was really nice. You can get some pretty cool effects as you can imagine, as you're most likely an artist watching this. Kind of play around and get some really cool effects with wood. I personally like painting and doing colored pencils on sanded paper anyway, so this was this was really fun for me. I get kind of bored of, of regular paper, so you gotta switch it up, right? You gotta switch it up. Anyway, um, with this. I was pretty much going dark to light. With watercolor, you always want to go, you know, you want to save your light colors, the light, the white of your paper. But with this, I noticed I had, to, the color was really absorbing. So I just went full on dark, as dark as I could, uh, pretty much with the blacks. So that's, that was Payne's gray that I'm initially putting down, but you'll see on this little guy's head in a few minutes here, I went crazy with the black because I was getting a little frustrated like, okay, this is not dark enough. I like a lot of contrast, right? You gotta get your darks really dark and your lights really light. It's the number one rule in, in painting, right? Is contrast, thanks to uh, Lisa at 
Wallachry Fine Art. That's her golden rule. So just a shout out there to Miss Lisa. Anyway, this is, um, so now I'm doing, again, the gouache is mixed in with the ink tent. So those colors there, I'm getting the different tonal values. Um, and that is mixed in with the light, with the gouache. I'm actually just putting my paintbrush right on the pencil and, and kind of blending it right there. And again, it's just water on my brush. So, yes, if you could please subscribe if you're digging this video and you'd like some more. I really enjoy doing videos and enjoy teaching. And I do these videos too for my class at Fine Line uh, Creative Arts Center. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. So, if you like it, please subscribe so I can really, so it supports my channel and I can keep on keeping on. This is the black ink tent so I went really dark I, I put on like probably two thick layers with the with the pencil of just the pencil and the ink and then I went over it with water as you can see this is kind of cool because you can see how fast it's absorbing into the wood but I actually really like it because it's giving the different the the different again values so it's not all just flat black it absorbed in different areas and different different um so you get different effects basically okay so that dried that black i, I did wait till that dried and now this is wash again where i just kind of did the little feathers there on his head now i'm getting in his his little feet his little paws here little cutie pie and he's going to be sitting on a um, on a branch okay here we go more with the oh yeah so now I'm getting the green I really want his eyes to pop and in the reference photo he's got the coolest like yellow green eyes so I'm trying to emulate that as much as I can and his his beak is a really pretty yellow and it's a really nice contrast too with the gray and the blues and of his uh, feathers. It's a really pretty contrast to have these yellows and the greens. So it's enjoyable. It really is enjoyable. Oops. Um, I am tilting the wood and that's kind of a cool shot because you can see the edge there. How I, well, my husband and I, how we, uh, how we trimmed and softened the edges there of the wood. A lot of it was just kind of playing around. Like I said, this is the first one I've done, and this was just kind of a fun practice one, but I, I really like how it turned out. I am gonna be using walnut next, so I'm gonna curious to see if the walnut will absorb as quickly as this one did. How am I feeling? Not. Unfortunately, we had to cut down a walnut tree on our property. It was not doing so good. So we had to take it down and we have a lot, a lot of wood. And I'm going to use parts of that wood for art around the house. And we used some of it for a mantle for above our fireplace. So now I'm putting in the branch and uh, I think this is uh, just a brown or a Payne's gray that I'm going over. Oh no, that looks more like a, that actually looks more like a, um, like a yellowy, a yellowy brown or something. The thing with Durant ink tents, they're, they have the coolest colors, that's for sure. Um, I love all their colors that they have. It's really a great, fun, fun, um, product especially if you love watercolors but maybe they're not bright enough for you or vibrant enough for you they the Derwent ink tents again it's ink so it's they're transparent but they're permanent if they don't lift or you really can't move them around like you can watercolors so it's definitely a different media but similar but different um, so yeah, if you want like a really bright, a bright water-soluble, watercolorishy medium, 
then definitely try out the Derwinning tents. They are so cool. Or if you, you're using some kind of thicker, you know, a different kind of a substrate that you need something really strong pigment. So I did the branch while I let the areas dry. And you can see he's coming along the feathers in his body. I focused on his little wings there. Oh my God, he's so cute. So I really finally got the dark, like the blacks and the deep, deep, deep blues to um, format to kind of create his wings. And then I got the lights, the whites light enough because they were absorbing and I couldn't get them light enough. So after enough layers, I was pretty much getting happy with, with what I was getting there. And I'm just erasing my sketch, my little outline sketch. I'm doing some little fall leaves here, just kind of seeing what happens and what comes up. Going slowly because there's really no erasing with this. I mean, I think you could. Actually, I did. I did erase something. I did use the magic eraser at the end because I, if you can see it down at the left, there's like a line. That's actually a green line that I just, I, I don't know what happened, but I rubbed up, you know, the pencil, hit it, and there's like that little green streak there. So I used the magic eraser and got that off and it worked. These are colored pencils, so these are Polychromos, Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'm getting in the details now. And, uh, yeah, there's no way I don't think I could get these fine details with, it would take forever, I think, to get the fine details with the, the way this wood is absorbing. I was just like, oh my gosh. So I got in the, uh, the colored pencils and that was just definitely the way to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below and subscribe and ring that or ring that bell. Yeah, ring the bell and hit that bell so you'll get notified of new videos. Thanks again. 